guys, how's it going? Master Bucks here and welcome to another episode of the Creator Club Career Mode in FIFA 20 with Masters FC. We are approaching the end of this year, 2023. We have the second half of November to get through and then the big, big, big month of December that's coming up. It's, 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 it's insanity. We're just going to take it game by game. Some of the more unimportant games and games that don't matter as much, we'll just move on, skip, sim and just play all the important games like this one that we have coming up against Arsenal. They are directly below us in the table and taking as many points off of the top teams is crucial to getting that Champions League spot that we are so desperately aiming for this season. One point separates third and seventh after 12 games and Wolves are in contention as well. You know, they're a few points back from, say, Manchester United, but I imagine that they could potentially become or come into the equation a bit. Then there's just a massive gap between Wolves and Crystal Palace. You see the gap between where the level is in this in this league. It's, it's, it's insane. But anyway, why waste time? Let's get stuck into the first game of the day. Arsenal are the first opponents that we will be facing today. And fingers crossed, we can get the job done against them. Start off with three points in this episode because... The first game of the last episode that we played against Chelsea, if you watched it, you know it didn't go too well. We responded well, and we've been able to play well since. So let's hopefully do, I don't know, we'll do a lot better than we did against Chelsea. It is a foggy day, and it, you can see how it's really affecting conditions here in the TMB Arena. We've never played in an atmosphere like this. His projected goals, Hunter Hunter, are just one below at the moment the current goal scoring record, but I think he will get close, you know. The man's only scored 11 goals from 12 games. He's on absolute flames right now. So too Jeff Adelaide, who's doing ridiculously as well. And this Arsenal team, from a quick early look at them, is interesting. Leno in goal. They've got Corona, Gabriel, Kimpempe, and Tierney. The back line, Lucas Torreira and Martinez. All right. Reese Nelson is there for him, as well as Oscar and Perisic with Inaki Williams up top and their bench is a bit different too. We've seen some teams that haven't really changed much over the last five years with their starting 11s in their lineups. Arsenal, it's a bit of a mix. It is it is definitely a bit of a mix, but we're off here. Fortunate to still sit there for Davies. Elliot, I don't know how we still have this ball. I feel like we should have turned that over ages ago and finally we have. It was right in the way. Oh my god, no one could block that. Travers, thankfully, with a big save. I was, you know, I knew that the turn was coming and he still went around me so easily. And now back stick. Dangerous. James having a clear. We're under the fucking pump right now. We are. Grab that, please. Oh, no. Why the punch? Why the punch? That is ju you're just shooting yourself in the fucking foot. Goes soaring up in the air. It's right there. You can just stick your hands up, grab it, and if he doesn't, he fouls. And of course, the punch would go straight, straight to an Arsenal player for him to head over the top. Again, can't get out of the box. Again, can't get out of the box. Oh my fucking God! These clearances are killing me. First Travers, now this. I'm, I'm literally, okay. I have fucking in the past just, you know, the Chelsea game that comes to mind. I've conceded a few goals because I've just not been sharp enough. I've not been defending. I'm doing everything I fucking can here. I've not made a mistake. I've not made any mistakes for any of the goals leading up to that. It, it's just, it's just, I'm getting fucking screwed here. And there's halftime. This team is playing at an unbelievable level, but I don't think they've outplayed me at all. I, they haven't broken me down. They haven't forced me into a mistake. It's literally just, I've been fucking screwed. And that is pure as day. All right, nice. Moving this all right. Oh, moving this brilliantly. Lovely ball in there. Adelaide, is he going to get there? He's got fucking Kim Pempe right there with him. But the fake shot, thankfully, gets it around him. And five minutes in, six minutes in to this first half, we have got ourselves our first goal back. Now one more needed to tie it up. He was closing me down, wasn't he there, Kim Pempe? I think the shot away from... If I tried to drive it across the face of goal, or even... I don't know, he might have gotten in the way of it near post, potentially even. The move was, I think, necessary, as it shows. That takes him to nine yet yeah, now in the Premier League. He is literally chasing Hunter Hunter for the golden boot. And they've both got, they've both got goals, like a goal a game at the moment with their ratios. It's ridiculous. As a deflection... That goes, now fuck off. I, 
Oh, that's stupid by me. That's stupid by me. Who cares? Who cares? All right. I fucked up there with the slide tackle. That was stupid. But I don't think ultimately it changed the fact that they got a goal off of that fucking deflection. The deflection that goes right there, I go sliding in. That is stupid. But regardless if I go sliding in or not, there's no way that I'm stopping the cutback and that ball getting to Oscar. That deflection is fuck. Like, that's three goals now. I really feel like I've been fucking screwed over by it. This game is continuing to find new ways. It is unbelievable. Yeah, another cutback. We just keep running out of fucking defenders. 4-1, that's the game. Again, they slip him in. I probably should have gone with I probably should have gone with Thilo Kerre to chase, but there was no way he was gonna get there. Instead I pull out Mavropanos and there's not a single player back to deal with Ma Mario. Whoever the midfielder is that should have been with him. Maybe in charm, I don't know. Good ball in there. Where's the cut back on? There is none. Kent. Oh, for the fucking woodwork. We don't even get a second goal back. Oh, God damn. Not a great day. Offensively, it was not a great day for us. Only being able to get the one goal and being shut out defensively. It was tough to... Oh, man. I just bit the inside of my cheek. Oh, my God. I'm having such a fucking shit day. Oh my god. Fuck, that really hurt. Ow. <laughs> first off, I get fucked over. The first three goals, oh my god, they they just were just, oh my god. I just, especially that third goal with that fucking deflection, that was mad. I just had a shit time, a real shit time in this game. I don't even think I played badly or that badly, really, to deserve that. So we will now lose our spot in the top four of the league because of that as well. And, uh, I don't know. The game very well could go different if we don't have Travis punch it straight to one of theirs. I forget exactly how the second goal went down as well. I think it was also another like deflect a deflection or something, but the third one was the most fucking ridiculous. A Europa League game, though, that we don't have to worry about. It's surely our spot in the group secured. I mean, it could even happen at the end of this game. We're playing the second team. We're skipping ahead. We're getting a draw, but even that should hopefully be enough. And it pretty much is, you know. I mean, look at this. Standard Liège, whatever they are, whoever they are, they get a win and we lose our next game, it it won't matter. They'll be on 10 points, we'll be on 10 points, but our goal difference is massive. So there's no way they're going to overtake us on goal difference. We, either, we finish second at the very worst, and I honestly don't mind. Whether it is first or second, normally I, I find that sometimes there's no guarantee that you'll get an easier opponent finishing in either or, especially in the Europa League, it's definitely got to be said. Bulgaria want me as the manager. I think I'm okay. Our next game will be against Wolves. We're two points behind Arsenal after that unfortunate result. If we get a win and hopefully Arsenal don't do well against Liverpool, then maybe, who knows, we might be able to jump them again and we'll at least get closer to Chelsea. But just hopefully keeping some distance between ourselves and Wolves will also be quite handy as well. But just three points in general would be very nice. Side note too, by the way, I only can't help but notice that Manchester City lost their first game of the season too. So now that's every team in the league that's at least suffered one L2. And it was Tottenham that beat them 2-1, as you can see up the top there. So any team can beat any team, really. Like, this Premier League title could be one of the most hotly contested of all time. But now for Wolverhampton Wanderers away at the Molyneux, we will see if we can turn around. Well, you know, I tell you what, I, I feel like I don't, I don't even think I need to sort of correct what I was doing. I really don't think I was playing that badly. We just didn't get a lot of chances on offense, so I'll try to fix that up. Defensively, I don't think I was that bad. I really don't. I just think I got the fucking... I, I just got some shit. Hopefully, we don't get the shit in this game against Wolves, but, you know, I'll just try to... I don't know. I, I don't want to always deflect blame, but it just does feel like I just get the fucking dick from EA, like, on occasion. And I just feel like that was just one of those times. Hopefully, now I've got all the bullshit out of the way in this episode and we can just kick off. So, at the Molyneux then, taking on Wolves, hopefully three points the first of the day. I do see some, uh, I, I've got to be honest, I think these are a lot of very familiar faces in this Wolves team. Patricio is still in goal. They've got a back line which is extremely familiar as well as Morgan Gibbs White Campana is a new face. Potence, I think, is also a fresh face as well, but Catron and Jota uh, other names on the bench though that look a bit different. Again on paper, I'm expecting them to be a little bit easier than Arsenal and I wonder if they'll have a different play style as well. Hopefully we can just grab early goals. I think that's that's normally what goes a long way in me winning games. That's gonna be a foul. 24 fucking minutes into this one already. It feels like it's flown by. Come on, run 
the board there with Tavares. Keep going with him. Sliding. Gets clipped. Gets fouled. Very well done, but is this a scoring position? It's going to be a bloody tight angle for Jonathan and Kone. Look, we will try it anyway. Not bad. Oh, off the woodwork. And cleared away. My God. I saw it just move the... The angle of the of the dip, the spin, it moved a little bit slightly, and I think that's probably what may have fucked us in not getting it on target. However, maybe there's a chance here. For oh, fucking finally a chance, and a real good one at that too. And Hunter is missed. He's missed, and he sliced it well wide. He's doing a lot right now. Akone. There's a foul. There's a free kick. He's offside. Oh my god! Why is it so hard? Goes out for a throw-in, and that should surely seal half-time. It's going to finish nil-nil. And, you know, we were the team that had the chances to score and open up the game in this one, and it hasn't worked out for us. Chances were coming more and more frequent toward the end, which is promising for the second half, but if I don't at least hit the back of the net today, I will be pissed. Sharp, Nuno Tavares. Hunter, he's in. Little one there. Tavares... To the right, and it's a charm that gets the goal! Man, Nuno Tavares went on an adventure! For a second I thought it was going to be him on the end of the chance, but he uh, just, in the end, just, I don't know, it was the better option for him to give it off one more time. As we clearly see, finally, of all people, Olivier in charm is the one that opens the scoring today. He's not really been in the game at all. But now here he is getting his first Premier League goal of the season in a tough game that we have struggled to finally open the scoring in. Well, we've done it now. McGree's been going relatively well for me, you know, coming off of the bench. Adelaide's pretty damn gassed. So hopefully he gets a decent little run out here. Uh, the, the Aussie, you know, who's been doing quite well. Ball's whipped in. Cleared away, Mavropanos. Oh, I was having flashbacks. I was having flashbacks to Cissé's own goal. I thought that was going in. Great tackle by McGree there. Lovely to see. Hunter Hunter going to get slipped in. No, not yet. But Akone will get plenty of space to move this ball forward. Might be able to go the whole way here. Why not try it from a tight angle? Oh, ho, ho! Jonathan Akone with the left foot. Okay, from that position, I'll take it. And that is the second of the day. And late in the game too, it could have sealed it. Ah, couldn't get in the way, couldn't make the tackle. Jota stuck it in for him late. I thought Fl Florentino would make the save there easily. Sliding in with James couldn't get there. And this makes the last couple of minutes of this game interesting. We can't lose it from here, but we could very well fucking throw away three points if we're not careful. Gosh, I really, really want to make sure I don't do this. Come on, switch it. Yeah, come on, Akone. Oh, yes, Hunter, Hunter goes around one defender, and I like the cutting run to free up space for him to just fire away and make it 3-1, get the breathing space back in. Look at this run there by McGree. Drags away the defender enough so that Hunter has the space. Come on. Little, little mini scare there, but Hunter gets his goal today in the end. 12 now for the Premier League campaign. What a run he's on, despite not being the greatest on the pitch today by, you know, by, you know, the, f whatever. He definitely was not the best today, is, right, is basically what I'm trying to say. Still doesn't stop him getting on the score sheet. And three minutes are up. Done. 3-1. That is the score at the end of it. Big three points. We get a lot of, uh, we really put a big gap between ourselves and Wolves now. And it's starting to look like a top seven now instead of a top eight. Wolves are starting to fade into that sort of Everton sort of, uh, territory where they're not good enough to be top six but a little better than the rest so yeah we'll take it 3-1 victory when it was it, it was tough going in the first so that means we're now eight points ahead of Wolves that is very big and again Wolves are now closer to Bournemouth and Newcastle and all that lot than they are to the rest of the top seven so here we go then we're one point away from Chelsea two points away from both Manchester United Spurs and Arsenal and look, despite only being in seventh, we're six points away from top spot. You know, I, we're, we're approaching the halfway mark of the season. It's still so close. I'm just going to go ahead and make a bold prediction that, like, it's going to go to the last day, whoever's going to win the league. I feel confident about that. And, it, like, even Champions League, there could be as many as, 
like you know, f- like three or four teams still fighting for a Champions League spot on the final day. It'll be that close. Real Madrid coming in with a big offer for one of our players, Reese James at right back, fifty-six mil. We could apparently get upwards of a hundred million for him. Again, I'll I'll delegate and ask the question, but I don't have any plans to let go of him. A youngish right back, twenty-three at eighty-five. I I feel like I never need to get another right back ever again with him. He's that good. Skipping ahead, getting a draw. And Schofield, who played, is injured. That is not very good, and neither is this. Shocker. We play or sim one game without him in the team, and he's immediately like, oh no, what's going on? It was inevitable. I'm just going to say that shit, even though I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. I'm so over this constantly happening every time a starting 11 crucial player doesn't play one or two games. That injury, too, is like a four-week injury. So our backup goalkeeper in Schofield is now out for... Like, basically until the end of the year. And let's just chuck in another training injury there as we moved over to the 1st of December. It's only a three-day one for CSA, that's fine. But, of course, 1st of a new month means new scouting updates. Italy is not looking great, either potential-wise or overall-wise. we got one guy here in Argentina, uh, Ramio Luna, who's got max overall 72, max potential 96. That's good to see. Uh, Haircut, he's got that fucking hairline that's gone way, way back. But that's all right, though. 230k worth of value. I would hope it had been higher than that, but still worth signing. And in England, oh my god, yes, do we have a bloke here. And Sam Green with 76 max overall, minimum potential of 76 and a max of 96. I'm expecting genuinely, like, potentially knocking on the door of a million dollar value. 675, you know, I'll take it. But oh my god, Sam Green, that he looks like he could be one of the best players coming through in our youth academy, you know? What about... Peter Lewis value, it's, it's okay, 6 9 It's actually gotten way better, I remember. So you know what? We can probably put him in. Others too. Ethan Davies, no. Or Davis. Aiden Mitchell, the potential isn't great either. But all right, a few plays for us to keep our eye on here. Come on. Sam Green ends up being a right midfield of 58 overall. I'd hope that had been a bit higher considering his max overall could have been upwards of 76. But that potential range... Is brilliant. Let's get these two games, by the way, against Watford and Braga quickly simulated too. Uh, I'm still going to sim the game with my second team against Braga, regardless of the fact that it pretty much decides who finishes top of the group. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't mind. I want to save my starting 11 for this game against Spurs. The starting 11 will play against Watford. We are the away side, so that always makes things simming interesting, but scoring early always helps. And especially when we go on and grab a 4 nil win. An injury, though... For Harvey Elliott. That is not great. Brace for Kona though in charm and Kent with the other goal. Lay it on me, Doc. How bad is it? Seven-day injury is not bad at all. Shit, he could be back for the game against Tottenham. And he probably won't even play in the sim game against Braga anyway. Magnificent stuff to see. And Reese James, no. Real Madrid are not willing to pay about $100 million for my right back. I'm not shocked. And we'll see how things go in this last Europa League game. If we finish first or second, regardless, I, I don't mind. We'll see. Obviously, I guess it'd be ideal to finish in first, but do we? We'd need a draw or better. Skipping ahead, we get the draw, 1-1, and we will finish top of the group. 5.5 mil added for getting out of the group stage in the Europa League. That's magnificent. And hopefully, only more and more money will be added onto our total as we progress through the knockout stages, hopefully. We'll hopefully find out after this game against Spurs as well who our opponents are going to be in the round of 32 in the knockout stage too. So fingers crossed for that as well. Hopefully we get niced there again, fingers crossed. I will be paying attention to see who SC Braga end up getting in the draw as well. But anyway, Spurs, this will be the last game of the episode and then we'll leave it probably. The next game we have after this is in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup, I believe, and it's against Manchester United. But again, because the Carabao Cup isn't isn't exactly a competition I'm giving too much care to this season, since we've already won it last season, I... I'm almost inclined to sim that one and play only the Premier League games to focus on just those. But I I guess we'll see how it all goes in the next episode, I suppose. This will be the last one of today. Come on, for one last time today, taking on another top opponent. We got done by Arsenal, had a better performance against Wolves. Now hopefully a real strong performance to be had against Tottenham. I really need to get out of this, this funk that I have against the top six teams in the Premier League. Every time I play one... I seem to be on the end of a really horrific result. This It needs to stop, seriously. Looking at the names, by the way, on the back of these Tottenham shirts, I, I'm fearing for my life here. This is a ridiculously good-looking team. The back line, 
is basically identical with Danny Rose back. Paulinho and Ruben Neves is, is a new one. But Nabry, Bergwijn and Hyungming Son with Musa Dembele up top. Oh, and their defense... Oh, my God, their, their bloody bench, too, as well, ain't half bad either. They've got players they can call on off the bench, too, like Ciro Mobile, just sitting there casually, you know? Unbelievable. No wonder the top teams in the Prem are so far ahead of everybody else. Like, it's not even funny. Not bad. Kone riding the touchline and burning his defender, Aurier, and a ball here. Oh, that is such a fucking great slide from Neves. They run so hard, and that is such a fucking clutch intercept. That has stopped the goal. Well, here we go. Something maybe here. The spin. Hunter gets taken down right on the edge of the box. This is ideal territory. Come on. We seriously have to score this. Perfectly timed. Oh, Lloris gets the save. Are you kidding me? I thought this would surely have gone in. It is pretty well put away. It's up in the top corner. It's just a little bit more. That little bit more I think it needed. And still we push. Tavares can run a long way. I can see Elliot actually here too. Oh, fucking... Oh, it's a penalty! Try to cut it back. I thought Sanchez made a great challenge there. Honestly, being the only one back, he still fucking made a way to stop us from scoring. Thankfully not. I do want to see this replay though. It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an intriguing one for me. I, uh, I don't know. Hugo Lloris has been pretty damn good today. And he cannot stop that one. Goes the wrong way. That is a peach of a hit from Hunter Hunter. Roof of the net. No chance, even if he went the right way. Come on, boys. Get in. It's been dispatched. His penalty-taking stats, Hunter Hunter, are still not amazing. Like, they could definitely still be better. His penalty-taking stats are probably still only in the 60s. But, like, they'll surely hopefully get better with his overall. Hopefully with a bit more training, too. And Jose Mourinho is fuming. So, you know what? I'm, I'm happy. There's number 13. Hunter Hunter got his first goal of the season from the penalty spot. Now he's got his latest. No one's in the way here. Fucking hell. <sighs> we turned that ball over. Just shooting ourselves in the foot fucking again. And by the time they got the passes, they got the ball into the box there. All I see is... Just, yeah, it's lined up for them to just keep moving it on to fucking Dembele. Is there a chance here, maybe? In for Hunter Hunter or for a Kone. Back stick. Not a bad ball. Tight angle. He won't win the header, though. At least we get a late chance from the corner here. Maybe. Maybe! The header goes straight into the turf from Mavropanos and straight at Lloris anyway. And that will be the half. All right, done. 1-1. One, one. We should have seen that out. We really should have. We just gave the ball away again. Fucking misplaced passes killing us. I really, really need to start getting points against the top six. And not just points, but fucking wins. So this is a game I'm really, really desperate to win. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Can we stop giving the fucking ball away? Oh my god, so much. Fucking constantly. That time, it's because it didn't pick who I was trying to fucking get it to. Other time before, because it was just misplaced. Hunter Hunter gets the clearance, thank God. Nice. Come on, it's through. And Charm's not the quickest. I think he's going to get caught. A fake shot will hopefully do something. In the middle here. Yes! Elliot, yes! It's 2-1 again! I thought it may have been a Kone that was through. It was in Charm instead. He does not have the pace to get away. That is a magnificent hit, though, by Elliot. Cut back from in charm, and it's 2-1. We lead again. Now let's hold on to this shit, boys. We need these points. What a tough contest. Harvey Elliott now. Maybe not scoring with the regularity of Hunter Hunter and, and maybe Jeff Adelaide, but big goals from him. Going here. I can see. Oh, that's a nice deflection. I saw fucking... I think that was in Charm that was in a great spot. Or maybe it was in Kone, sorry. I keep getting the two mixed up. Oh, dear. Now Kone's off. Oh, my God. Fuck it, Kone. You really had a shit spell there. He was in a great spot if he just stood still. Instead, he just starts running at the goal and running at defenders. That is fucking outrageous. Are you kidding me? The confidence they display playing the ball out from the back, it's fucked. What a ball. Nabry, the Cruyff turn, or the Alston turn, as I should say. And now he has a go. That's deflected, but Travis collects. Fucking hell. Thought he had a swing at Travis there. My God, with his foot. 
And now we're on here once again. Even if we just get it away from goal, we don't exactly have to score here. The time is running down anyway. We need to see out these points. Hopefully we can... Oh my god! Of course, picked off! Now the ball whipped in from the box, but simple and grabbed by Travers. And we are just going to hold this and then boot it forward. And that is a crucial and well-earned 2-1 victory over Tottenham. Finally, we get a win against a top six opponent. And how big it is. Come on. Your team scored the decisive goal. What do you make of it? Are we the better team? We should have put the game. Nah, time to focus on our next match. You managed to turn the tide and find the decisive goal given there wasn't much to split the teams. Did I have any doubts? I was. I was starting to. However, this game seemed a lot easier compared to the games we played against Arsenal, Chelsea, for example. So I definitely thought we'd give it our all and it's, yeah, it's thankfully ended up in the right result. Mixing up drills a little bit here. Kelly, McGree, Cook still getting their drills. I'm going to work on Hunter's penalties again because, look, it's only 62. He still puts them away way better than a 62-rated penalty taker. His finishing definitely being a lot higher, I'm sure, helps for sure in his composure. It, just a few things there that could be worked on desperately. So, um, yeah, that and Salo, we were working on his defending stats before. Now we'll give him some attacking drills. I mean, he'll hopefully end up becoming quite decent in all areas and all facets for us and hopefully become a bit more than just a CDM for us. Still waiting on the group draw to take place, you know. I, I don't actually think it has. And we've now reached the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup against Manchester United. And it does look like, ah, uh, finally we have got the group draw done and dusted. So who do we have in the round of 32? It does not say yet. Braga got drawn against Real Batiste. Okay. We got drawn against Porto. So, I think you just edge it to Porto to being the tougher team there. Once again showing there are no guarantees that finishing top of a group will guarantee you an easier opponent, I think. Although, to be fair, I think both teams are about the same sort of level as each other. Maybe Porto only just being the better team. But anyway, they will be our opponents in February, a little down the line. And I reckon we'll leave it We'll leave it here halfway through December. We're still plenty of games left to go and a January transfer window coming. Quarterfinal against Manchester United, Manchester City and Chelsea to play as well. And then uh, other games like West Ham and Bournemouth that we'll probably just move on with. I'm, I'm debating as to whether or not I play this quarterfinal game. You know, I guess quarterfinal, you're like, uh, you're like two opponents away from making another final. I reckon maybe this is a game I could play. I'd still maybe do it with my second team because I'm still going to prioritize uh, the big game against Man City, all the, all the Premier League games. So I'll do that in the next episode. We're going to rotate the team a bit against Manchester United. Somehow I feel like they'll go all guns blazing probably, but we'll see. We'll see what they do. We will see. It should hopefully be a good one. Till the next episode, my name is the Master Bucks. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to check out the Masters FC Club Store. Cop yourself a shirt, a jersey, whatever you're up for. Thanks all for watching. Till next time, my name's Master Bucks. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you later. Bye.